a measurable effect on the distribution of a performance trait in a population, right? But it's not that simple, though, because selection is not acting on just one performance trait at a time. Performance is actually a function of the integrated um, morphology of an individual, and this is constrained by the need of an individual to perform more than one single task, right? So this is the, com the concept of the functional trade-off, right? So classic functional trade-offs, sprint speed and endurance, sprinters look different than uh, marathon runners, and that's this difference in gross morphology is due to training and the physiological underpinnings of these two traits. And the difference in this anatomy or morphology comes all the way down to the muscle fibers expressed. So, this is interesting. Um, Trade-offs should exist. We should find them, and that should have implications for how selection acts on the population and how evolution proceeds. And indeed, some studies have found evidence for <coughs> functional trade-offs in natural populations. Some studies don't. And then more studies don't. So what's the problem, right? Um, well, there's a couple problems with uh, the existing research in that sometimes they ignore sex differences and that would have uh, obvious problems when species are sexually dimorphic. Um, measuring only two traits, a laser focus on the two traits of interest may have problems um, with your overall statistics, and I'll show you that in a second. One thing, if you only measure two traits, um, you won't get at this idea of individual quality, which has been shown to mask functional trade-offs, because if you do this thought experiment with me, if we measured 100 random humans in a lot of performance categories, and some of them are Olympic athletes, and some of them are me, you're not going to find that specialized athletes have uh, trade-offs compared to me, because my scores will be well, well lower, right? So it's the same if you catch a bunch of lizards, some of them are going to be Olympic athlete lizards, some will be sedentary nerd lizards. So you have to account for that when you're looking at your statistics. So, we caught a bunch of lizards, local New Orleanian uh, Anolis carolinensis, we measure morphology, and we measure performance. And this is a suite of performance traits that really captures sort of the whole range of what they do. So sprint speed, we had a racetrack, um, bike force, using a bike force meter, <laughs> and my, I mean, we didn't use my finger, but they might have well. Okay, cling force, and also have toe pads, and then we have two different measures of how long they can go before they're exhausted. <laughs> um, we use high-speed video to look at jumping and climbing performance, right? So, got a lot of data. There's a lot going on. Um, do we find trade-offs? So, if we had just measured sprint and endurance, we would have been really bummed out because there's no trade-offs in the raw data. But if we look at individual quality as a covariate, so we use a composite score from all seven performance traits, stick it in a multiple regression, you find a trade-off. So, sprint and endurance are actually negatively correlated but we wouldn't have found that unless we had measured a bunch of traits. Cool, right? Okay, so let's look at multivariate space. So we did a PCA with performance. I'm not going to talk about these two graphs. Uh, I'll put them in context with morphology. So here's the morphology PCA for males and females. The first axis is going to be size. So individual quality as a morphological trait loads the same way as size. So everything kind of gets bigger. Um, bigger is better. The second axis is shape. Okay? So Bigger arms go up, legs down, right? So every individual gets a score. Interestingly, males and females' individual quality loads oppositely on this axis. So let's relate those performance axes to the morphological axes and see what comes out, right? So size, let's just say, is bigger always better? Well, for males, size does correlate with some higher um, performance capacities, but not others. Females, it's even more pronounced. Bigger is better for um, Guys, but smaller is actually more correlated with higher sprint and climbing and exertion. And that kind of makes sense if you think about it. So this other morphological axis of variation, we have shape. So in males, longer legs, good for some things. Longer arms, better for other things. Females, not the same. So there's no shape correlation with performance in females. So take home message, functional trade-offs do exist. You just have to look for them appropriately. Sorry. Thank <laughs> you.